Good morning, Jim. Morning, Jessica. What can I do for you? Well, my publisher and his wife are coming to visit, and I'd like them to experience an authentic Maine lobster dinner. I'm kind of short on lobsters at the moment, it being early and all. I'll have more by the end of the day, once the fleet's back in. Oh, dear. They'll be here by then. Tell you what, Peter Hammond's boat is still tied up at the dock. Why don't you go talk to him? Maybe he'll be able to sell you some straight off the boat. Good idea. Thanks, Jim. Peter? Oh, no, Peter! So this is how you found him, Mrs. F? Yes, exactly like this. What do you think, Doc? As to what stabbed him, I have no idea. It's a very strange-looking wound. Some sort of tube, perhaps. I should think that a wound like that should have resulted in a lot more blood. Meaning? Meaning that Peter may have been killed elsewhere and brought back here. Any idea on time of death? Hard to be sure. Sometime during the overnight hours. We better have a look around to see what else we can find.
Hey, what's going on? I'm afraid I have some bad news for you, Billy. Your uncle was murdered last night. What? I'm afraid it's true. Oh, man. The Lobster Pound is always the nerve center of the fishing community. We should talk to Jim Price and ask him if he knew about any tensions between Peter and the other lobstermen. And in the meantime, I better call my... Hey there, Jim. Do you know if anyone had any disagreements with Peter Hammond? First person who comes to mind would be Andy Winters. He wasn't on friendly terms with Peter? <laughs> More like unfriendly terms. In fact, they were downright hostile to each other. Know where we can find him? Sure. He's got a boat with the buoy and his colors mounted on top of the wheelhouse. I forget the name, but he left a picture of it around here somewhere.
According to the photo, we're looking for a boat named My Turn. With a red and blue buoy... I think I recognize the dock. It's not far from here. Hi, Sheriff. Jessica. What's all the excitement over on... Peter was murdered sometime last... It was? Yeah, and word has it that you and Peter were not exactly friends. I wouldn't say it was any different than for other fishermen. Mostly name-calling. I'm pretty sure Peter was cutting my traps. Did getting even with Peter involve killing him? Absolutely not. Then you won't mind telling me where you were last night. I was at the Harborside Tavern all evening. Yeah? Can anyone there vouch for you? Well, sure. Had you noticed anything different about Peter? Had he been doing anything new recently? Yeah, he weaseled his way into some sort of cushy research gig with the Marine Research Laboratory. You make it sound as if earning some extra income is somehow cheating. When the rest of us are struggling to catch enough to earn a living, you can't blame us if we resented him. Especially since Peter was having a better season than us. was a little big about his alibi for last night. And he seemed bent out of shape that Peter landed a gig with him. I agree. Which is why that should be our next stop. Sheriff, Mrs. Fletcher, come on in. I'm Greg Young. What can I do for you? Were you aware that Peter Hammond was killed last night? No. That's terrible. Was it an accident? I'm afraid not. Peter was murdered. He was working for you, right? Yes, he was. I'm working on a project researching the lobster population off the coast, and Peter was helping me gather data. How did you connect with him? 
I posted a flyer at the lobster pound, looking for a lobsterman willing to make detailed notes about the lobsters he was catching. Peter was the first one to answer the ad. I just got a call from the station. What is it? Billy Hammond says there's been a break-in on his uncle's boat. Okay, Billy, what happened here? Some guy broke in here was poking around the cabin. He took off when he heard me coming. Do you have any idea who it was? Nah, I only caught a glimpse of him as he ran off. But whoever it was, he smokes a pretty nasty cigar.
Let's head over to the Harborside Tavern and see if we can find someone who's- Good idea. While we're there, we can see if anyone remembers seeing Andy Winters there last night. Oh dear. Looks like this place has fallen on hard times. It's the only place I know in Cabot Cove that sells Dominican cigars. Let's ask around and see if anyone remembers Peter spending any time here. There's someone smoking one of the Dominican cigars we found at the crime scene. That's Mick Foley. I should have known. He's a notorious loan shark. Enjoying your Dominican cigar, Mr. Foley? As a matter of fact, yeah. Billy Hammond just surprised an intruder on his uncle's boat who smokes the same kind as you. I'll save you some trouble, Sheriff. I was on a Cornelia about- What were you doing there? Looking for something to collect on the loan I made to Peter a few months ago. And since Peter wasn't very good at keeping up with the payments alive, he sure ain't gonna keep up with him dead. Defaulting on a big loan might be considered- Not for me. Peter was worth more to me alive, as long as he didn't retire. Was he ready for retirement? Nah, but his nephew Billy couldn't wait to get his hands on the Cornelia. He was always trying to convince Peter to retire instead of taking out loans to keep the business going. Do you know why Peter fell behind on his payments? He said the lobsters weren't biting, but I heard through the grapevine he had an ex-wife down in Florida that kept up in the alimony. I see. So where were you last night? Right here, working out the details of a loan with a customer. Andy Winters, apparently, going by this contract I found. What do you think of the deal, you- Sorry, I gotta protect my client's confidentiality. 
Now, if you'll excuse me. So it would seem that Andy was telling the truth about his whereabouts last night. I'm curious what he was planning to use the money for. Let's go talk with him on his boat first thing. Okay, Andy, we followed up on your alibi at the Harborside Tavern. You met with Mick Foley there to discuss a loan, didn't you? Yeah, I did. With the lobsters getting scarce, I needed the money to get through the season. Fortunately, I should be able to pay the loan back before long. Why is that? Heard there was a job opening near the docks. Just a little something to do on the side. You mind if we take a look around? Knock yourself out. Greg Young sure didn't waste any time finding someone to replace Peter. I agree. I wonder why he was in such a hurry. Maybe we should go over to the lab and ask him ourselves. It looks like Andy Winters is your new assistant on your research project. I know that replacing him so fast may seem inappropriate in light of Peter's death, but I had no choice. Any lapse in the data collection could ruin a whole season's worth of research. Why are you repainting one of Peter's buoys into Andy's colors? Easier to repaint it than refit another buoy with a new transmitter.
You got an explanation for the blood on these shards of glass, Mr. Young? It's simple enough, Sheriff. I dropped a glass cylinder and cut myself when I went to pick up the pieces. And I have the bandage to prove it. So when was the last time Peter visited your lab? It had been a while. I usually went by his boat to pick up his data. I hope you don't mind, but I need to get back to crunching numbers. Blood on the floor and on a possible murder weapon? Seth certainly has his work cut out for him. I'll have him check the blood against Greg's to see if his story checks out. Sheriff, I'm pretty sure that Billy Hammond was here at the lab the night Peter was killed. If he has a good explanation for that, I'd like to hear it.